Hi there, good afternoon. Wilhelm Swart here from uh, Blue SP South Africa. Yeah, amazing. So, uh, can't believe it. It's our uh, it's our 10th uh, webinar series today, uh, and we've had a tremendous response, uh, you know, over the last, uh, you know, 10 weeks uh, in South Africa. Probably, you know, well over a, a thousand people that's now basically been, you know, in these sessions with us and, and, uh, and a lot of reference of people referencing back to these sessions. So yeah, um, I think the, the exciting news from from South Africa right now is that uh, you know for the last um, ten weeks we've we've still been going up with our COVID cases, um, but uh, in in the last week we we went through the peak and now our daily cases is actually on a decline. So very positive from our side as well. So so obviously our numbers are still quite high. We're very cautious. Um, you know, everybody is doing the, the right measures and, and we've been very, very blessed in that we could continue working, you know, from home remotely and, and also, you know, with lower people in the office um, um, very, very effectively over the, the past few months. Um, and uh, but, yeah, you know, good to see that that we are actually on a on a different curve. So, yeah, so we, we did. You know, we, we basically right in the midst of, of of the initial wave, we said, oh, no, we, we need to take this time to really upskill and cross skill ourselves and also to educate the, the customers and, you know, show them a bit of what we're doing. And so we did these amazing sessions. So, you know, like we started like as I said, 10 weeks ago and, and talked about things like advanced process control. So Kevin went in and he, you know, he, he gave us an overview and how can you use it? Um, and, and also the methodologies of how to approach the project. And then we we build on that. You know, we had, for example, you know, the APM, the asset performance management team came in and spoke about how do you use that to predict failures while in advance. At that stage in this VUCA environment that we are, where people are looking to uh, um, have less eyes and ears on site and be work more remote, we had a session on MES and on basically MES in the cloud and how do I share the data, how do I, you know, and how easy it is to deploy and how do I link to the data. We followed up with some further specific Aspentech APC sessions and we also started getting more of the Aspentech people in to present with us and so we had some great sessions and these sessions are all recorded so you can go back and refer back to them and then, you know, carry on with some further asset performance management looked at a multivariate analysis on like variances in a process and in a, uh, you know, and why do I have quality issues and predicting when it's going to happen and, you know, and stuff like that. And so refer back to that. We pulled our our um, colleagues in from Ace Technology to talk about automation as well and the methodology of using and, and approaching these projects. We stopped at Enterprise Insights. So how do I get a wider view on an, OT, uh, on an OT enterprise? And you carry on bus building up to it to where we are right now with two MAS sessions. So very, very interesting um, period for us um, in this in this specific period, this period that Antonio Petri, the CEO of Asmatec, refers to as a VUCA period, a, a period with lots of volatility, uncertainty, you know, angry, uh, 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 change management that has to happen, anger beauty. So, so, you know, things that, that we need to be able to be agile, we need to be able to move fast, you know, and, and adopt to this changing environment. Maybe a little bit about about um, us. So, so I I lead um, the OT cluster of Foresight. So the you know this this group here. So Foresight is a is a, a JSC listed company of about 400 plus people, um, quite successful and and you know focusing on 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 very on three. Uh, key areas, so basically the IT space so, uh, and also the business environment space, but uh, I represent the operational technology space and really this this team is um, of about 80 people is made of, of three companies, an automation company, a simulation company, an optimization company, you know, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So the, if I drill down a little bit further into Foresight OT or operational technologies, Really, these are the type of solutions that we bring to market. So we'll probably start with like simulating a plant before it is built, or if it is built, you know, to see where the constraints are. Um, you know, work with you know controls, so uh, low voltage uh, uh, um, electrical distribution or MCC distribution. So bring some of the controls in. It might bring some instrumentation in. That team does all of that. Uh, when we start running the plant, we'll push the data from the plant into MES type systems and you know, start turning that data into, into information. If we have complex uh, automation requirement or, or, or process optimization requirements, 
Uh, we'll bring in um, the advanced process control team, the chemical engineers, the metallurgists to you know, bring value in that way. Uh, and obviously, when you run assets, it's it's all about you know how do I do predictive pre preventative maintenance. So there's quite a lot of things that we do um, as a team. So so really, another way of looking at it is looking at it from a benefit point of view. So a lot of the clients is you know thinking of okay, so number one benefit or one uh, number one uh, 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 priority on any site is safety. So how do I use like you know uh, automation systems to run the plant much safer? Or you know most of the safety incidents um, basically also happen when you have an unpredicted asset failure. So how do I use asset performance management like Intel to predict a failure and then sort of react before it and prevent that from happening? Or then we have lots of technology that you know run it more energy efficient. So. Uh, you know, how, how do I do it? For every megawatt that I uh, um, save, I save, you know, a, a ton worth of CO2 gas associated with it. And you can do it with various things like advanced process control. If I go into a grinding circuit, you know, or a boiler circuit, I can reduce energy usage there by 10%. You know, or I could say, for example, in a chemical dosing process in a, in a, in a, in a, a nickel facility or a copper facility or whatever, we could, you know, we have examples, case studies where we saved up to 20 percent of the, the, uh, the dosing chemicals associated with it. So, so quite a lot of things that we can do there um, as well. And then if you basically, you know, the, the next thing is, you know, you want to basically push that plant. So the plant is being uh, uh, designed and built and and finance to do a certain throughput. If you're not getting it, if you're running at a low overall equipment effectiveness, you're just burning cash. So, you know, how do you do that? You use MES to measure and then use, you know, some of the things that we spoke about last time, like delay accounting downtime to try and push the boundaries there or, you know, or, or better ways of automating. You know, so the same is using advanced process control or some of the other things to push the yield up. If you take a, a processing plant and you push the yield up 1% on these big mining processing plants or chemical process or manufacturing facilities, then the dollar value of that is huge. You know, and also, you know, so a lot of our, our manufacturing facilities, if they have variability in the quality of production, they're scraping or downgrading 10%, sometimes 20% of their production. And that amounts also to huge amount of costs and, yeah, and so with uh, things like ProMV with the multivariate analysis that we deploy, we can basically help clients to sort of predict and prevent that from happening in a continuous process. And that's a whole. So if you refer back to some of these sessions, then that those are some of the sessions that we've covered. And then also in today's world, you want to be agile. You want to be able to deliver it fast. So you, you want to use standards and you want to use the latest drag and drop functionality to enable yourself to engineer these things fast. And then, you know, the, I think the last one also very important is, is, you know, how do I, how would I use, you know, pattern recognition or data analysis to predict a failure, you know, weeks in advance. And then if I can predict it, well, then I can actually improve the availability of the assets, you know, or I can, if there was a failure, um, and then we can sort of reduce that failure to a much shorter period of time because I have not time to to plan for these things. You know, and all of that is 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 to do with maintenance and maintenance cost. And that is, you know, your maintenance team and your maintenance cost is one of your biggest costs in a modern day industrial facility. So yeah, so we basically bring you know it all together with with sort of uh, this picture. You know, it, and it's a little bit of a complex picture, but it sort of tells a a specific story. You know, so so. Really, what what we say is is it's all about you know um, data you know so 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 these sites or so these industrial facilities brings a lot of data and there is some technologies that we use to transform that data or bring value to the data and it, and then it's all about the needs of clients and you know so what we show here on the left hand side is that not only are we talking to CIOs but the, you know there's there's plant operators and technicians and chemical engineers and electrical um, superintendents and you know um, metallurgists and chemical engineers uh, very different groups that needs value from this data you know so so we basically you know work with these people on their requirements you know and really use this technology to basically bring new business models new value to them if we look at the type of technology that is in the midst here that we bring you know it would be things like IIoT, so Industrial Internet of Things. So about 40% of all um, IIoT or IoT devices that's deployed today in the world is in industry. So this is the biggest boom of where things are happening. But then also, you know, using um, AI, machine learning, deep learning, the technology that 
that we're getting from Aspatec and some of the other vendors to, to, to bring value to the data, to transform the data, um, 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 advanced analytics, you know, for example, the technology that we use in ProMV, you know, and multivariate analysis to transform the data, grow models that we can use and do predictions from. The simulation guys use like simulation planning and scheduling and constraint simulation technologies to build a digital twin. And, and you know, it's only when I started working in the group that I can actually, or that I saw how, how often and how successful they do it. You know, and then other things like virtual reality, augmented reality. And then, you know, all of this has to constantly be, be, be linked into the ERP system. So, yeah, so we link all of this into SAP, you know, quite regularly. But, you know, but however, also in the Foresight Group right now, we represent three of the biggest um, ERP companies, you know, in the, the world, you know, that, that, that we basically engineer and provide services for directly. And so, you know, so, so quite a lot of experience in ERP um, optimization and, and, and also interface. Now, so if we look at this technologies, who brings it to you? So, so really, if we start at the bottom and we go up, so like I said before, you know, you at the bottom, you in the automation space, you want to measure the data, you want to connect to the instrumentation, you want to install the instrumentation, you want to con do control with it. So do PLC SCADA, DCS control with it. You want to make the environment very, very safe for the operators to work in and you, you know, and you want to visualize the data. And that's very much done by our uh, um, uh, um, age technologies automation group, asset automation group that is a part of the Foresight OT cluster, you know, and they, you know, so led by Donnie and, and Michael and they are a multi-vendor uh, um, solution provider or system integrator, you know, and they work with the likes of like Siemens, Rockwell, ABB, Schneider to provide these solutions uh, to the clients and um, um, a great outfit in, and work all over Africa and some other parts in the world as well. They're now also focusing more and more on also bringing cybersecurity into that industrial layer. So basically going inside to the, 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 the PLC SCADA um, network and seeing, listen, where's the vulnerabilities, where's the gaps, you know, and how do we solve that? So, and, you know, also focus, uh, you know, on edge and, and cloud computing related. Then if we, so that's age technologies, um, focusing on asset automation. Then the next two groups, um, you know, they sort of overlap each other. So let me first talk about, you know, the, this group here, you know, and so, so they are, uh, simulation engineering technologies, uh, a group of 26 industrial engineers, you know, also based in Johannesburg and focusing quite a lot on, on things like constraint simulation of a mining and an industrial process, also focusing on, you know, planning and scheduling simulation and the control of that. So, yeah, they would simulate a rail system for you. They look, they do things like a warehouse slotting, they're doing things like um, um, logistics optimization process optimization. So if you come to this event next week, you will hear how they use simulation in a process environment to basically build a digital twin. And so um, really an, an amazing bunch of guys to be working with, you know, and see how, so they, 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 sh they point us to the places where we need to bring uh, the automation or for that matter, the asset um, optimization to. And then the third group in here is, is the company that I lead is the MD, Blue SP Technologies. And yeah, we are uh, Aspen Tech reseller and ISP. And you, you, the simplest definition of what we do is we are we, we are in the, in the business of transforming data. So we take this data that we get, you know, from the automation layer in historians and we start transforming it. So we'd use an MES to transform it. You know, so we'd use, you know, things, you know, like uh, um, uh, the, the, the MES functionalities to, to do MES reporting, some of the things that we spoke about. Uh, but then we will use things like machine learning uh, um, uh, and, and, and pattern recognition, uh, prescriptive maintenance to bring knowledge to it, to say, oh, uh, I've seen this failure before uh, um, two years ago. I, I reckon this is what it is. You know, go and look there. That's like knowledge. Or, or we could, for example, go one level further and sort of do multivariate analysis on it and sort of saying, listen, um, very complex data set, but we've grown a model out of it. And so now I can use this model to predict, you know, what is actually going to happen. So, you know, we, we like would put that in the wisdom category. category. So, and there's various tools, like we'd either use the C team to do a simulation on like a supply chain, or we'll use some of the higher order Aspatec tools if we have a very complex process, you know, and, and so forth. So, so yeah, so we're in the business of basically transforming uh, data into, you know, information, knowledge, wisdom, you know, and pushing it and linking it up to the ERP system. So what we're doing in this two weeks is last week, we focused quite a lot on, you know, on, on MES and specifically, you know, it, it was to do with uh, like, um, 
we, we, we focus, for example, on, on this year, so downtime systems or delay accounting systems, so how to improve the OEE. We also focused on batching systems. We touched on, we started with the MES foundations. We'll build out on that today, you know, and but that was really last week. And then this week we're going to a bit further, you know, some higher order systems um, 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 than that. So, so we again use, review the MES foundation, look at, you know, how do you do um, enterprise operational reporting using the MES foundations? How do we do metal accounting, mass balancing, you know, energy balancing? How do we approach these projects and how do we make those rather complex projects simple from our approach? And, and uh, Henry will also be speaking a bit about some of the specialized MES functionalities that um, we've developed is like the, the Waybridge type solution. So maybe a last uh, view just on uh, on where we are on, on BlueSP. So yeah, so in BlueSP, we, we have three sets of software. You basically, um, uh, we represent, you know, a design set of software. So if I was building a new plant, I would be focusing on how do I, you know, how do I design it? How do I bring it in on cost? You know, uh, how do I make sure that it's on time and that it's the most sustainable as possible? And then we have a set of software there like HiSys, uh, you know, or um, Aspen One and, and various tool sets that we use in that space. If we have, if we finish building the assets, then we'll focus on, oh, how do we run it to its optimum? Uh, you know, so how do we, how do we maintain it? So how do we make sure that, that it doesn't break down unexpectedly? So we have technology in there that basically focus on predicting and preventing the asset failure, you know, or uh, predicting um, and preventing the process quality failure, you know, which is ProMD or some of these things, or things like, uh, you know, doing a simulation uh, of the maintenance risk associated with a specific plant section, the Fidelis technology, to point out to you where the, the, the challenging areas are. And then, you know, really the focus of today is, you know, how do I run, how do I operate these mining facilities, this industrial plant, this manufacturing plant to its optimum? So you, we said before, you know, one of the first things we did is we pushed this 500,000 million tags at one second or half a second interval into this industrial historian space. But then what do we do on top of that? What do we do with that data? You know, and that's really the theme of today, which we're going to be talking about um, with Henny. So I think with no further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, Daryl to basically just tell us a little bit about himself, introduce us to the presenters of today and also the, the agenda for today. Daryl, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Wilhelm. And as Wilhelm said, my name is Daryl Opie and I'll be your host once again for this afternoon session titled MES, Enabling Manufacturing Optimization. Um, a little about me, I graduated from WITS with a BSc in Electrical Engineering. I have over 20 years experience in the mining and manufacturing industry, uh, where I've been involved in electrical automation and in digitization projects and solutions of various shapes and sizes. Currently, I'm the Solution Sales General Manager here at VUSP. Uh, to take you through the details today, we have an ex our extremely experienced professional services director, Henny Jacobs. He also has a degree in electrical engineering, has been working on Aspentech products for the best part of 25 years, and is well known and respected amongst his peers in this field. Supporting him today, we have Dumisan in Gorbe. He's a computer science, computer systems engineer with over 10 years experience as well. He is proficient in more software languages than you could possibly imagine. So just a little bit of house scheme today. Most of you should know how this works by now. Everyone will be on mute. Um, so if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section and we will attempt to answer them at the end of today's session. Um, we might also just keep an eye out. If you do ask a question, we might just type in answer in a direct message as well. Um, so, but please take this opportunity to ask away. Don't be shy. Uh, just a reminder that this session will be recorded. So the agenda today is broken down into four topics with the Q&A at the end of the session. Firstly, we all know that your MES is crucial and your central pivot for all your operational data. So how do we use this foundation as a platform? Then we will outline our enterprise operational reporting offer. This front end, for want for a better word, we have developed over the years to show operational enterprise data from your MES systems as well as pulling in data from your other enterprise systems like your ERP, your LIMS, your wave bridges, energy management systems, etc. We will look at how we are using operational inter 
Enterprise Operational Reporting, or EOR as we call it, to derive values through things like mass, energy, or water balancing. Then before we get to the questions, we will quickly see a bit of a practical example of how, the, how this integrated MES comes to life in terms of a wave reach solution. So with that, Henny, um, please over to you and take us away. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Um, I think I must put my camera on also for just a short while. Um, so yeah, just to see that there is somebody behind talking. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to this uh, session this afternoon. Um, I'm very excited about a lot of the stuff that we have done on this environment. So firstly, I just want to recap a little bit on some of the items that we uh, that we looked at uh, previously, uh, some of the, the previous webinars we we had a look at and, and, and we basically, sorry, that's the wrong side, um, where we basically uh, had a look and, and, and view on how we want to uh, basically address what our customers require and what, what do they want to achieve. And part of this is how do we have this data that's that's Situated all over different departments, and how do we collectively get all this data and work, work towards the same goal? And that is basically to make sure that we run the operations in an optimized way and be able to reduce cost. We want to have to get insight into how our process is working and determine how we can improve these processes. We're constantly evolving. You, I mean, you've seen, in, especially in this 4 IR environment, and how all the new initiatives is driving uh, companies and businesses to improve and make sure they get a uh, better value out of all their data and, uh, and, and systems they have. We want to make better decisions out of all this data that we're getting. We're utilizing a lot of real-time uh, uh, data, plant data, and we want to establish how good is our plant doing and make decisions uh, very quickly from anywhere and anytime. Um, we want to have data in a, in a single platform with tight integration between our different systems. You will also see later today, it's part of how we want to, to put down the EOR and focus using the EOR on how do we fulfill the enterprise requirements. We wanted to do a, a root cause analysis uh, on a lot of our data. So if we look at the MES, then just a recap again, I'm not going to go in all the detail, uh, there's some previous sessions, like what Alan said, that you can go and, and listen to the recordings. But effectively, the MES is our uh, central uh, repository where we are basically getting all this data from the different solutions uh, and combine them into a central uh, uh, database or a system where we can get insights. We've got the LIMS data, we've got the plant control systems, the different DCS and PLC systems, which we want to pull in real-time data and uh, be able to uh, provide insights on our plants. We, we also require wave reach data, and you will see later I'm going to address just on a high level on, on some of the wave reach functionalities that is required uh, to have a fully integrated system. Our ERP systems are um, very important, um, and we'll, a lot of our customers is using different ERPs like SAP and and, and, and CISPRO and, and SAGE, a lot of them is getting used by different uh, industries. Um, so yes, we want to be able to use this data and, and do different actions on it and get value out of it and provide uh, knowledge from all, all our data. Um, so if we go to just uh, how, how does this picture look for us for uh, in, uh, having an integrated MES solution, it's uh, we already addressed some of this where we want to combine this into a central database and be able to, to react on certain events, do aggregations, do calculations in this MES, and then do a batch analysis, uh, do uh, SPC function, functionality on our data, and do certain analytical um, and enhanced processing of our data to give us get us insights. So this is just, uh, let's say, a high level view of, of what we have done in previous sessions. Uh, what I want to do here is to basically just uh, put some down where this whole concept of uh, utilizing an EOR uh, with an MES uh, was, was started. Uh, 
so we've seen a shift, not only having a plant MES, but also having enterprise MES systems. And, and MES are also moving towards the cloud. We, we, we look at uh, as vendors like Aspen Tech that's doing a lot of focusing on how do they move their MES systems and have done it successfully in, into the clouds. Um, and to be able to get uh, better solutions to the customers, doing a lot of uh, innovation. Roughly about a few years ago, about, eight, about let's say around 10 years ago, um, we started with a solution what we refer to as the uh, enterprise uh, operations reporting, which is the idea behind it is to do an operational level type reporting that ties in with our foundation, uh, which is our MES. So, if we just look at the, a different view on, on how do we want to look at these different businesses, we have different plant assets uh, for mines, processing plants, smelters, refineries. Uh, uh, we have steel plants. We've got petrochemical and chemical plants. So all of these plants needs to combine their data and be able to have uh, accessibility towards what's happening in the process. We, we've got uh, throughout all of these different industries, different control systems. We've got different plant historians, uh, plant MES systems. Uh, you find that in one customer, the one area is uh, using a certain kind of uh, uh, MES or historian, and another plant area, it's using a different one. Um, a lot of the companies are moving towards standardization, but we do see a lot, and we found that a lot of uh, this information is still in different systems and you, we want to be able to provide and get all the data from this uh, uh, systems and be able to provide re operational reporting on enterprise uh, level. We also want to combine this plant data with your typical uh, uh, analysis lab analysis data. Uh, again, the same in that scenario, the, the customers have making use of different uh, lung systems uh, that we have seen through in the industry and the same already with the ERP, as I've mentioned. Uh, so the idea was to, to pull in all this data from the ERP and from the plant systems and from our limb systems and, and wavery systems, and also making use of a possible manual input where data is not available electronically. If we, if we look at some concepts on how do we want to, to uh, address this need of pre to provide data on an enterprise level. We basically starting with the first concept that I want to start with is what we refer to as process segments. Um, and this process segments is basically uh, a means of trying to group and identify our data on different levels. The, we having this enterprise operational reporting, we following or, or closely uh, the S88 uh, standard where we want to be able to report on an enterprise site and area and the different plant units. So, uh, and that's basically what this process uh, segment is defining. It's defining our different areas and also defining it for different models. We will see later we can define an actual or a planning module, a model rather. Uh, and also a yearly model. So it depends on how we want to look at this data. Uh, we will then be able to define the process segments. Just some examples from of these process segments can be a domain where we basically are grouping certain process uh, segments also together. We have a parent group. Um, we have different plants and units that represent uh, a process. We also define process segments for stockpiles. Um, movement of material from point A to point B, uh, typically over a way bridge uh, could be a movement where we would consume material into a furnace or um, we would transfer final product or crush final product and, and, and get out different uh, parts of the final product. That's all of that is defined as movement of material and we associate that with various process segments. KPI groups that we can uh, group together to decide how do we want to uh, report on, on this data and also looking at some of the control recipes. Um, associated with the process uh, segments, uh, is, uh, we, we want to be able to provide insight on what do we want to measure for that specific process segment, being a stockpile or a, mo a material movement. 
Uh, it all depends on uh, what is the data that we require to get to report on. And we wanted to make it configurable and maintainable. And it's acting as, let's say, master data for the, the rest of the EOR getting used through the views and through our reporting. These are just some examples. It's um, basically uh, configured according to the customer's need. Um, and you can create it with uh, configuration GUIs. So if we see how we will combine this process characteristics with our process segments, we basically uh, uh, then define for each of the process segments uh, a variable number of characteristics that would be used to define we, what we want to report on. Uh, typical examples of instance like uh, weights, uh, what is the flow of uh, material, um, what is the actual material that is getting moved from point A to point B, what is the material we are getting con consumed, what is the source of this material movement, and what is the destinations. Uh, very important in being able to cal do various calculations, uh, we also need to capture what is the analysis. Um, in some, some of the solutions, you would want to know what's the model, uh, metal content of uh, certain streams and certain uh, material. Uh, how much material did you receive over a way breach and what is the analysis content of it? So a lot of that is, uh, well, all of that is actually customer specific, but um, some of these are uh, generic uh, in a sense of that it's required through the, uh, all the industries and all the processes. Engineering units, um, very important in, in a reporting functionality, especially if we want to be able to report on a, on a standardized way for the whole of the enterprise. Um, we make use of storing the data in certain base units, um, and then we have various configurate, uh, configurable engineering units that we then use as part of these views and report to be able to report um, the material on a, on a standardized way or the data on a standardized way. Reporting periods. Um, is uh, also configurable in that you would want to uh, uh, sh show data in a different time frame. So what we are trying to do here is to be able to represent a time duration for, for which we want to report on. Now, these reporting periods can, can be uh, configurable and, and, and decided on per customer or per uh, area and also per application. So if you look at, uh, maybe we want to look at the data on a production day. Uh, you will then define the production day as a typical reporting period, which uh, enables you that any movement of material, um, any uh, flow of material, and all of the movements over, a specific, over one of the wave breaches. If you want to combine all this data in a production day, you would typically then define this reporting period as a production day, uh, which is then getting calculated in a cascade way uh, using the, um, the batch data and all the reporting periods that's depending on one another. Um, you will also see that you can define for um, the specific production day and production months, you can define what is the day you want the month to start on and also the hour. So as an example, maybe you would uh, stick to the normal calendar uh, uh, dates which is then starting from the first of the month and ending at the end of the day, end of the month. Or you would maybe say, I want to start at the 15th of a month at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. And that's when my production day is starting and also my production month, um, which we will then use in the calculations and using in the reports. Um, these uh, uh, re reporting periods, uh, we can also define what's the naming format for it and how you want to be able to see this data and, and show it. And you will, you will like to see when we talk about some aggregations functionality that you would use data from the different reporting uh, uh, periods. So looking at the calculations, you can um, uh, understand or, or agree that if we look at reporting on an enterprise level, although the MS is providing us and the different systems is providing us with a lot of uh, calculations that uh, does totalizers and, and certain flow measurements, all of these data is very important in how do we operate this plan. But when we want to consolidate this data into a central uh, reporting functionality and on an enterprise level, 
we also have to have calculations that is vendor, let's call it vendor independent, uh, so that we be enabled to do any calculation from any data source and do any kind of uh, calculation like mathematical string manipulations, looking at data, do logical calculations. We also needed to draw down um, functionality within the, doing the calculations uh, to enable you as, uh, as, as, the, as the customer to be able to find what is making up my calculation? Where, where is all my variables coming from? Uh, which uh, process segments and which characteristics are getting used uh, for this calculation? Uh, yeah, on, on, on the right hand side is just an example where you basically have got a, a, a fairly long um, calculation that is defining on how are we making up and how do we get to the res results of the data using the different segments. Publishing the data, um, again, we also need to make sure that we can publish the data and make it available for different groups and uh, different areas of the plan. And you also want to lock this data in once you have published this data, not to enable any changes on, on, on this typical data that you want to supply on enterprise level, uh, because what is happening or could be happening is that you would want or uh, push out the report and then data changes and then it's uh, a lot of confusion and a lot of different variations of this data that's uh, available in the system. So the very important to be able to publish and make sure that this data is validated and approved before it's making uh, used in the reporting. Security very important, um, also built in like the rest of the MES functionalities uh, in order to do a, a link to the Active Directory, um, we were looking at uh, three tier authentication here where we're using the roles. Who can do, who is authenticated to log onto the system? And what is the role in this uh, business that we tie to the Active Directories as well? And then, very important is once we know who uh, has logged in, what is the role of the user that is uh, using the system? What is the actual functions? that can be done on this data. Um, and then you, we in the system will uh, configure and make sure we can create characteristics, we can create process segments, we can change in the engineering units and different uh, functions. Um, that is all tied up with your Active Directory logins. So if we look at uh, just a, a flow diagram view, um, where we want to define different data models, a planning mod, a model and an actual model, uh, where we then use this data for the same process segment, the same characteristics, but the, the actual data model is either a plan or an actual, which is a way then to do a plan versus actual comparisons for the same process and the same uh, characteristics, uh, just using different models. Um, these uh, process segments that we've mentioned before can be areas, processes, stockpiles or movement from material from a specific stockpile to a process. Um, and then also looking at uh, the characteristics itself uh, that typically represents stuff like what's the start time and end times of a process or a movement. What is the process values like? What is the weight weights? Um, and then do we calculate dry weights and analysis is also very important in having these characteristics for the different uh, process segments. So looking at the EOR from uh, just a high level is where we basically want to um, incorporate this uh, different systems, but we needed a way of making sure that we don't give um, access to the actual uh, data tables, uh, very similar to what you would find for your typical ERP and your LIM systems, any, uh, all of these external systems. And also the MES is providing all the data via a typical API type uh, web service or a, a REST API type uh, interface, um, various ways of getting the data into uh, the databases. And typically what's happening in this environment is where you then make this data available in, in staging tables or uh, collect this data from various staging tables. And the scenarios that we are looking at here, um, all of these applications are uh, 
actually pushing the data into, into the EOR, uh, into a, um, a table that we refer to as, uh, as this staging table, it's where we then obtain all this data and then getting making use of all the process segments, characteristics, and the calculations, aggregations to be able to report and calculate all this data. Um, some of the foundations, uh, order trail functionality behind uh, all of the data. Um, we currently making use of the of Microsoft SQL Server database and our reporting that we are doing are using SQL Server reporting services. The front end of the EOR is also web front end and uh, getting data into the database is basically or into the EOR is making use of uh, the API that we have developed. Um, if we look at some of um, um, different retrievals of getting data out of it, one of the additional ones is getting data into Excel for, uh, for sp specific engineers. And uh, there's Excel adding that just uh, can retrieve some of this uh, data that we use. We, I must say that we do use the EOR uh, or most of our customers that's using it is using the actual reports that uh, can be exported uh, to Excel or to uh, uh, PowerPoint or PDF, and uh, where they then use this data on online way or a printable way. So in order to maybe just give some uh, insight on how do we use it, um, I've just selected a small little example uh, that I just wanted to give or illustrate a bit on how we, we would configure and use some of this data uh, from the EOR. So, uh, again, there's also a process model configurator that we use uh, to be able to almost have a drag and drop effect uh, where we then can be able to lay out how our process looks more on a, on a model, um, which makes it a little bit easier to navigate and also uh, interrogate the data and drill down into the data. A lot of the manual um, uh, menu operations is also available to be able to do this. Just for the rest of the slides, I've basically just wanted to uh, show an example of how do we calculate the platinum mass content in a residue stream. Um, so if we look at the process segment configuration, we typically would then be uh, defining what this process segment is about. We will give it uh, all the uh, details like the name, descriptions, published groups, what you want to associate it with. Um, the uh, publishing period that you want to associate this data with. So here in this example, by the way, you will see I've uh, highlighted some of, or, or commented out some of the uh, sensitive data possibly. And then uh, you will see at this case, we want to uh, calculate this for the production month and we want to calculate it for the plan and also for the, the actual. Um, the characteristics that's associated with this uh, process segment in, in this case is uh, we want to look at some of the um, uh, mass data that we're calculating. We also want to look at the uh, analysis data, which we then obtain from the lab for, for this uh, stream or the specific process segments. And then we would uh, define what is each of these uh, characteristics, data types, what's the heading we want to see and what is the engineering unit that we want to, to use. Um, we will have a look later. I will show you that's how do we do some of the aggregations um, to get to uh, the, the publishing period of the production month. The process segment also from the materials point of view of for, for what is the material that's getting associated with this process segments and is typically defined in your materials category and type and then the various uh, names. These names are uh, in, in most cases uh, materials that the names that tie up with your typical ERP or the master data that's getting defined within the business. It uh, doesn't have to be, it can uh, also be different, but uh, the, the standard is basically to follow that. And then we will set up for each of these process segments, what is the uh, uh, security and authorization that's associated with this role. We will see I've mentioned in, in uh, earlier that we are uh, link this to the Active Directory and we then configure only the authorization as part of uh, this process where we then con uh, configure the process segment. Characteristics aggregation is uh, basically for a convenient way of making sure that for any of these process segments 
we want to be able to uh, link or associate it a custom calculation to the process uh, segment and its characteristics, or you would want to define it that it's uh, based on another reporting period. And this specific example, what I've done here is we wanted to we want to calculate what is the platinum mass in the stream. Um, what we are getting as a input um, from the lab system is our analysis uh, of, of uh, for that specific uh, element. And what is the actual mass? So this mass can either be a flow and it's converted to mass, uh, but that's basically the input to our calculation. And our output is then what is the metal content for the specific uh, stream of material? So this calculations uh, are then configured. And th this specific one we have configured on the actual batch itself. You can define this to either to be on a higher level, but uh, like the production day, but we have done it on the production uh, batch. You um, um, can base it on another uh, reporting period, and you can then also configure the rounding and, and limits associated with this uh, configuration or aggregation. Just some of uh, the visualization that we've that we've got as part of the uh, EOR is. Uh, we do do the reporting and what we refer to as reporting data sets. So it's uh, configurable uh, tables within the actual solution without having to configure a, a SSRS report or a SQL Server Services report. Um, and we just call a specific standard uh, procedure. And depending on what has been configured in the data sets, uh, we will then display the data on different means. Some of the different means of getting at the data is a cross tab with uh, totals, or we will just look at the matrix type uh, table um, that we want to do the reporting on. And then this uh, uh, reporting will be done on the rounding and engineering unit conversions uh, as defined within the, uh, the characteristics. So typical uses that we have used the uh, EOR and the MES Foundation for, um, we've done typical metal accounting, production accounting, um, uh, enterprise or management information systems, mass balancing, uh, and then obviously enterprise operational reporting is uh, the, the foundation or using the foundation to be able to do uh, the reporting and the functionality of what's required in all these different uh, areas. Then the last section is basically going into the, the Weybridge, uh, uh, high level view of the Weybridge, and how the Weybridge is playing an important part of our integrated uh, MES solution. So just again to reflect back to where, where we are and what does the integrated MES solution look like, and we have seen, like we've said, we want to basically integrate all the control systems, Weybridge, LIMS, and all our ERP into a central repository or central uh, application server or database server, where we then be able to do various batch uh, or analysis on our data. So why, why then is it important for us to basically have this uh, integrated uh, Weybridge? Well, we want to capture all these movements. Customers want to know what is flowing over this way bridge, uh, either on into the plant, out of the plant, or uh, internally. A lot of these movements is with you, they move material from point A to point B, and they want to know how much material did it uh, move. Uh, it's also s serving as a actual production or actual um, figure because very often a lot of this uh, movement of material cannot be weighed due to various reasons. So the, the weight breach is helping in a, in a great deal with getting the actual figures of what is the material that we either then can use as what is the material we produced or what did we move. Uh, we also want to know what's the quality uh, of our raw materials. There's certain uh, standard operating procedures that's uh, associated with receiving material. Um, we want to know what's the material we are receiving. We also want to know what is the final product that we are shipping out, and in some cases, what is the intermediate materials, possibly to a, uh, a warehouse or to a, a staging area, and then which you can then transport from this staging or area onto a vessels or 
whatever means you are transporting your material. We also want to uh, take advantage of having the integrated solution uh, giving us the power to be able to weigh against your typical purchase order, your sales order, uh, transfer orders and process orders. We want to be in a position to be able to update your ERP system with what is happening today on your plant and be able to provide the ERP with the data of today and not waiting until the month end before you need to do a lot of reconciliation and a lot of combining Excel spreadsheets to understand what is all the material movements that I've got and how do I associate that with, uh, with what I've got in my ERP systems. We also want to provide uh, certain movement instructions. Um, there's typically what's happening in these instructions is uh, depending on what is your business uh, process, you either want to send a, a truck for a second way or a third way, or maybe you want to weigh this way bridge in on one way bridge and weigh it out on another, um, which is just making it easier for your uh, uh, process flow or uh, traffic flow within your plant. And then we also want to have this full transactional history of the data so that we can look at all what was received in dispatch from an audit point of view. Just giving a, a high level picture of how it looks, um, typically getting down, downloading the sales orders or contracts and internal orders from your ERP systems. Um, we're making it available in the MES where further um, analysis of these orders can be done by either associating with different materials or different areas in your plant, should that be the case. Uh, but in, my, in a lot of the cases, the contracts are just getting used as part of the way bridges to be able to uh, calculate and capture what is all the raw material receipts, shipments and uh, internal transfers. But uh, movement controls, uh, which is uh, in, the, in the way bridge, which is assisting uh, the drivers and the whole process of where should I deliver the material or where should I go and pick up the final product and then uh, issuing of tickets. Um, and uh, I've already mentioned that we want to weigh in at uh, possibly at one way bridge and weigh it out at a different one. There's also some dynamic characteristics associated with this kind of movements. Um, and you typically find that within your uh, uh, sales orders where you want certain uh, um, characteristics associated with it. Maybe you want to know what's the lot number um, and but it's not associated with all the sales orders, just specific sales orders, depending on what it, who is your customer. And the same is true for the purchase orders. Um, if it's uh, possibly a one type of raw material, uh, you want to have the, the order re or the way that it's reacting in a different way. And then that would typically be then going to find within the dynamic characteristics. Once the data has been uh, um, completed or the movement has been completed, it's getting uploaded into the MES and uh, getting associated with uh, results from, from the lab that, uh, gives a, uh, that gives an indication on how much uh, material and what is the quality of, of the material. Um, so just a, a high level overview. Um, over the, we can have centralized for multiple databases. Um, we have found that the customers sometimes prefer the centralized database. And just worth having a client, uh, web reach clients to, to use the system. But in some cases, we also have uh, multiple web reach databases with each of its own um, client tools. Single and multiple operator stations. Uh, we also have the functionality to connect to a specific web reach from a client tool and then connect to a different one should that uh, be, be the case. Um, the, the orders and drivers and truck registrations are all master data. And in, uh, which is getting downloaded either from the ERP or from the MES where it's normally maintained and getting used within the way bridges. Um, variance uh, checking also be done uh, depending on how much raw material uh, you received. If you compare that to possibly supplier info, if you want uh, to go for a second way or a third way, a lot of this variance uh, checking can be built in so that you can define when it should go to the next way bridge. And then, like I said, certain um, movement instructions. Uh, as an example, you're on the right hand side where I say proceed to the loading point where you can load the material or um, uh, go and uh, offload certain material. 
full transactional history uh, with data that's uh, uh, stored in the MES uh, for long-term use as well. Different order types, um, just, just some examples here. All configurable, um, the idea here is once uh, order is uh, got an open status in MES, it will be made available on the, on the way bridge to get used. Uh, and then you can capture various um, uh, information that's required depending on what kind of orders you are weighing. Some of them requires vendor information, some of them uh, just delivery notes. And then, all, like I said, also the warriors and truck registrations and drivers all configurable. Um, Waybridge data is uploaded to the MES um, from the various uh, uh, Waybridges, if, if there's more than one, or from a centralized Waybridge is getting uploaded into the uh, um, the MES system. Uh, also, the various uh, scale interfaces, um, mostly uh, the, because a lot of the scales are quite old, there's uh, a lot of serial interface required, but some of the newer scale indicators also make use of Ethernet uh, interfaces. And then some Waybridge uh, reporting or, or how the data is getting used is basically updating the stocks and there's various dashboards and various reports which is then making use of this data and some customers then will uh, require uh, movement approvals which is then getting done in, in the MES. Uh, these are just some examples of uh, some dashboards and also some utilization graphs on what you want to do on, on your way bridge data. So yeah, you can, so just coming back, uh, uh, second last slide, uh, finishing up, is basically just uh, showing how important it is to have this integrated in a solution uh, and to combine all this data into, into a central location for uh, the whole of the enterprise. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of investment uh, that's happening in from the vendors and from us as well, and from Foresight and Blue SP, where we are driving towards this digital um, uh, transformation, where we're converging the OT and the IT world, um, and also making use of the cloud uh, deployments in the able to fulfill the requirements of all our customers. Uh, Daryl, I think with that, uh, I don't know how's our time looking, but um, yeah, so uh, thank you and back to you. Yeah, thanks, Henny. Um, yeah, very good. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, we've answered a few questions on the side, but I think there's two main questions that, that need to come through, which I think will be useful to everyone. One is, can this enterprise operational reporting be deployed with different MESs and historians? Um, Yes, um, the, like we've said, in, especially when we started with, uh, with the EOR, um, customers have got different solutions, different historians, and we also uh, having a lot of um, uh, experience in interfacing to systems like the SAPs, where um, you using of certain APIs and remote function calls, it was very important for us um, to also provide a gateway type uh, API where you then independent on what kind of system is getting used, you can get the data from the from the source. Okay, thanks. And then in your last question led up to the next question because you've just mentioned um, SAP. Um, is the Wavebridge solution that you've been discussing ERP dependent or independent? Um, so um, our Wavebridge solutions here is uh, more dependent on the MES itself because that's the central, the MES is the centralized database that is getting used, um, which uh, in, in all the deployments, or most of the deployments, we've seen that the Wavebridges is uh, linked to the MES and the ERP data is transferred into the MES systems. So we don't directly from the way it itself uh, integrate to uh, the ERP. So uh, just sending the data to the MES. Okay, thanks. So Henny, that's all I have for you at the moment. Um, so if anyone still has a question that they want to sneak in, please please type it into the comment section. And we'll try and answer it. Otherwise, um, I'm going to pass it over to Wilhelm to close out. Thank you very much, Henny and Dumazani. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you, Daryl. Thanks for the Q and A section, and thanks, Henny, for a for a great presentation delivered. So yeah, we learned a lot there. Um, quite a quite a mouthful. Um, yeah, and and uh, I, th I think um, really you know the way that 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 you approach these projects is, uh, you know, really if the client is interested, you have a call, you get into a functional design specification phase with the client, and sort of really clarify what what the client needs. So we spend quite a lot of time on basically uh, uh, de developing or writing the functional design specification and using what we have already and showing various examples and then um, quickly defining the projects like that and making sure that that what the client um, then gets is is very predictable and measurable. Um, and yeah, I think you guys are really doing a great job. And, and I think uh, there's years worth of, of uh, I'm not going to say your age, but there's many years worth of MA skills in your team. And you have um, quite a, a multi-level, um, multi-discipline skills. So there's some chemical engineers, some data scientists, uh, some electrical engineers all in your team there. You know, so it's so a real great team um, that's working with you on this. So um, as that all said at the beginning, guys, this event was recorded. So you'll get an email afterwards. Again, you can share it with other people as well. You can you refer back to it tomorrow or you know in the months to come um, as is the other you know or as was the other event so like you know this is the 10th event um, that that has been there so please refer back to um, to last week's event which, where Henny spoke about delay accounting or downtime or even those previous ones where he showed a lot of the live demonstration on how you look at the data how quickly you um, jump around between pages and he spent you know quite a lot of time earlier up so refer please back to those those sections um, yeah, and it continues so next week we're going to have a um, you know a webinar by Jakob Werta and Willem um, Darling which is the two directors of um, simulation engineering technologies and they're going to be focused very much on this theme about you know doing simulation of a process plant how to build a digital twin for a process plant and what the value is it and like I said these guys have many years worth of experience in this space, and they're also um, a set for a, for a very good presentation there. Um, you know, we, we are continuing a lot with with um, you know virtual training, so either e-learning or virtual training throughout the lockdown period. So if you're interested in MES training or APC training or at asset performance management training, you know, please contact us. Let us know those courses are basically carrying on um, and there's quite a lot of people that's upskilling and cross-skilling um, in this period yeah, and then like our consultants our MES or APC or APM or whatever automation consultants is ready to engage with you so if there's something that you've seen that you've heard that you want to engage with us please reply back you know either text here in the Q&A area or send us a note tomorrow uh, and we will get the relevant person to um, contact you and, and engage with you with that, I would like to thank Daryl for being host. So, you know, thanks for introducing the people and we're with us as well. Nicanette for, you know, uh, arranging a lot of these events and setting it all up. And then especially for Henny and Dumasani for the, you know, uh, late nights and preparing the content. Um, you know, so engineers, you guys know that engineers likes engineering. They don't like uh, building PowerPoints and sharing some of this information. And we didn't go a lot underneath the bonnet. We really, I'd say to them, guys, keep it simple, keep it high. Let's rather engage one-on-one uh, -on -one with customers if they want to talk about things like, you know, um, enterprise operating reporting or metal accounting or mass balancing or energy balancing or any of these things like water balancing, the new, you know, most critical you know, commodities of a modern day industrial facility. Let's engage one on one with those clients. So they waiting. Um, we will engage with you with that. I will sign out and thank you all for spending this hour with us. And we really appreciate your support, your business, um, you know, and, and thank you for your interest in what we provide.